Bringing it all back, isn't it? The Tragedy <laughs> Singer's second solo album, Euphoria, debuted onto the music charts last Friday. It's competing against Afrobeats artist Burma Boy for this week's top spot. Can she do it? Yeah. Claire joins us now. Good morning to Good morning. you. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming in to see us. How does it feel to nearly have a number one again? Uh, it's crazy. I absolutely, I think when we started making the album and even released it last week, I don't think any of us expected it to, to even be anywhere near the top spot. So I'm just absolutely chuffed that people seem to be really enjoying it. Can I just say, I've been listening to it and, I, I, you know, you picked some phenomenal tracks for this. So just explain yeah. the idea behind it. So it came from a conversation I was having with my producer, Steve Anderson, and I... When I first started singing, I sounded very different to how I do now. I was very musical theatre and very... All I really listened to was the sound of music and Mary Poppins and, that, and the, those were the songs that I would sing. So it was very like Julie Andrews. And it was... And I always say that I kind of learnt how to sing from listening and singing along to these amazing female artists, starting with Karen Carpenter. That's who... I, she was my absolute idol and I just wanted to sound like her. Right, so these are covers from like great divas and, and yeah. great songstress. So you open for Celine Dion, I think you're covering one of her songs. Right? Yes, so uh, when I did my last solo album, I opened for her in Hyde Park, 65,000 people when she played there. And I Surrender is a song from an album she did 20, 20 years ago. Which is mega cool. I just want to clear something up because <laughs> I think you've said that um, Steps, you know, nowadays, if they were to come back, didn't necessarily or don't necessarily have the cool. That if they were to reform, they wouldn't necessarily get the platform that other artists might. Is that right? No, I, well, I think we, back in the day, no one thought we were cool. And for good reason, probably. You know, we used to wear bright. <laughs> oh, that's good. I think, but I, think I've, I feel like we're cool now in a in a kind of throwback retro so kind of way. So you think you're cooler now than you were Do you know, then? I don't care anymore. Doesn't matter anyway. I don't care anymore. I think it's, it's you know, we're not, we don't apologise for what we are and what we do. And because we've got a, an amazing loyal audience that have stuck with us. And that's all that matters. I think before the cool thing was being recognised in the industry. You know, everyone thought we were a bit of a novelty and a bit of a joke, but actually, 26 years later, we still we had a number one album last year. Yeah, and we saw you back together for Brighton Pride. Are we yeah. going to see you back together again sometime soon? We're, we're having a little bit of a break from Steps for the moment, and we're all kind of going off and doing our own thing, so that's why I'm doing this album. You know, part of Euphoria and you yeah. know, what you talk about um, in the album and choosing sort of strong, powerful uh, women is very much kind of that, that, that messaging. Yeah. You know, and I wonder you know, what it's like to be a kind of woman artist. We've heard a lot about it, but mm. you've started talking about what it was like when you first came in the industry. I mean, I'm right in the first band you're in. Yes. Somebody told you to lose weight. Do you think that's still a problem? Um, I hope it isn't. And I would like to think if somebody ever said that to me now, I would tell them where to go. But I think back then there was quite a... <sighs> especially female pop stars are expected to look a certain way and there was a prototype that everybody had to conform to really and I wanted to to be in a band so much that I did anything that I had to do to to mm. get into the to the group and you know it played me for a long time but now I feel like I hit my 40s and I feel like I've earned my stripes now so I you know I feel much stronger now for going through all of that. Good right. for you. You've also talked about, I know, you know, the symptoms of the perimenopause, haven't you? How yes. when you're on The Masked Singer that you felt you could feel that there was a difference in you. How, mm. how are you now? And how was it sort of speaking out about that? Did you feel there was more support as a consequence? Because I think a lot of women go through it, yes. don't they, on their own, hide it, it, it and try and cover it up? Yeah, I think um, I feel quite lucky to be going through it in a period where others have spoken out about it already so I feel like there's a lot more there's a lot more information for me to find and I think you know half the population is going to go through it at some point and I was surprised at how little we know as women about perimenopause the menopause anything that happens to us I was there's a lot of symptoms that we don't know about and I think anxiety and mm. The, the, what I was going through when I did The Masked Singer, it was, I'm a ner I get nervous anyway, but that, but that was beyond anything that I'd ever gone through before. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting time. So Euphoria is about claiming your own body, claiming yes. that pride, and I think you're going to be 
performing at Pride this weekend? Yes, right? I'll be at Reading Pride this Saturday. Um, it's, I think it's my last Pride of the summer, but it, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. So Aww. thank you, everybody. I'm really, really chuffed. Congratulations. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. It's brilliant, you know, and uh, it's great to see you. Thanks so much thank for coming to talk to us this morning. And a really good thank album, I have to say. And I'm, you know, not the coolest person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Oh, thank you very much. Now, here's Laura with the weather.